Hello. Well, I'm back again. Made it through the hip surgery with the last couple of weeks. I took a little hiatus from the video seminars, and I just really thank you, the Lord, for all the prayers that uh, all of you have um, made for me. The Lord answered the prayer, and the Lord brought uh, an angel to an um, angel of mercy. And right next to me is Teresa Terry Nyman. And Terry uh, is an old friend from many years ago. I first met her, oh, maybe, I don't know, it was 25 or 30 years ago, her and her husband, Scott. And uh, I asked her to, if she would proofread the Apostolic Bible Polyglot at the time, before the first edition was printed, and she said yes, and she spent a long time, a lot of effort in uh, proofing the English text of the Apostolic Bible. And uh, if it wasn't for her diligence, uh, the Apostolic Bible uh, would have been ridiculed a lot because of what she found, and that was the missing letter P in Passover. So it was Passover in the Bible, Apostolic Bible Polyglot, and then Terry developed the uh, headings in all the chapters, like here, uh, Psalm 6, the Lord delivers from the enemy. Terry put all these together, and they've pretty much been the same for all three uh, editions. And then Terry and her husband are, uh, have decided to uh, help me out and, uh, while my, during my hip surgery and stay downstairs and uh, take care of me, getting through this whole thing. So it was a, a real answer to prayer. Now, Terry, after she uh, did all this proofing and, this, and the, uh, the, the section headings, she went to, got a degree and went to England to the University of Wales, where she uh, received a master's degree in theology. And then she later went to uh, a university here in Oregon and received a PhD in education. She teaches at the local college. And um, so i just like to introduce you to, to Terry, and uh, anything that she would like to add to this would be appreciated. Terry? Hi, thank you, Charles, for inviting me. Um, so like Charles said, um, I was his associate editor for six years. Um, we worked on the project together um, for uh, about five, six hours a day, every day, just reading over and over and over and over. Um, and it was an, an honor for me to do that. Um, like Charles said, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about myself, a little bit about my background. Um, I did my PhD at Oregon State University in higher education administration. Um, I taught K through 12 for about um, 20 years and then higher ed for about 10 years. Um, I taught at Oregon State University, um, several community colleges, and then also Shanghai University in um, China. Um, so I did a, some teaching in China for five years and um, just kind of learned to love the Chinese people and their thirst for the truth and their thirst for God. Um, it was a pleasure and an honor to be there. Um, I did my Greek studies at Multnomah Bible College in Portland, and um, I'm just extremely happy to be with Charles again, especially while he's um, rehabilitating, you know, from the surgery. So um, it's a privilege to be here with you. And uh, we've been talking about uh, the Apostolic Bible. Some of you may be wondering in the future. A lot of people write me and they know that I'm, I'm in my 80s. And what happens uh, when you croak? Uh, is it going to be continuing or is not? And uh, I wasn't really sure. But the Lord brought Terry back in uh, to the, to the uh, Apostolic Bible and taking care of me. And so but right now we're in the plans and we could use your prayers of putting it uh, into a nonprofit organization where uh, if anything happens to me, well, not anything happens if I died, and then, of course, I'll be in heaven, but Perry will be, unfortunately, will be stuck here, but he'll, she'll be able, uh, if it's in the nonprofit uh, for the, the house that I have here and everything, continue 
the work and other people can get involved that she finds or the Lord run, brings in to the uh, project and to our lives, it, it would be really wonderful. And so we're at the very beginning of uh, th thinking this all out and praying about it. So this is uh, basically uh, what has happened in the last couple of weeks. Pretty amazing how God works. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was wondering if I was going to live through this <laughs> operation, and uh, it went way better than I thought. I, uh, they got me up walking the next within 24 hours, going up 30 stairs within 24 hours, and now I'm almost without a cane. Uh, and I have a new walking companion, though. Uh, my dog Arlo died a few years ago, and I miss him, but now I have Spike. And Spike is a uh, seven-inch long uh, ball. It's got a head uh, like a dog and a long spike. It goes into my femur, and I walk with this uh, prosthetic, and I call it Spike. And so the uh, uh, Lord has been good, brought me through it, and uh, I feel better. I was uh, I met the Lord when I was uh, four years old, and my mother took me to a Lutheran grade school um, uh, before. Before I went to the grade school, then I did go to the grade school when I was older. And the, um, then I uh, had a Born From Above experience in 1979, December the 30th. And um, that was uh, in the Greek Anothen. If you remember, Nicodemus came by night, and Jesus told him that unless you have been born from above, it's not again, unless you have been born from above, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. And so, uh, 79, I was born from above, anothen. But there's another word in uh, Peter, it's called pal uh, palin genesis, and that is the genesis is born and palin is again. So there is the being born again, and I feel that in the last two weeks, I have been born again, palingenesis, uh, come back out of this um, anesthesia, and everything, a lot of things have change. So um, with that, we're going to go now into Psalm 6. Psalm 6, the Lord delivers from the enemy. It begins in the title, to the director, in emnis, a hymn. That is a transliteration. You can see emni, hymn. Hymns were sung, generally. Different musical instruments are just with voice and no instrument. For the ogdois, we have an ogdo is an eighth, and our octave uh, is comes from that. O octave, ogdi, uh, in music you have do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, eight. So they had this back in 2,500 years ago with uh, octaves in their music. Uh, psalm, psalmos, to David, um, we have another transliteration. It's like here with Imnis hymn, Psalmos to Psalm into English. O Lord, Kyrie, you should not reprove me in your rage. Well, yeah, God is really raging at us and mad, mad at us. Uh, <laughs> we don't want that him to do that, Lord. <laughs> you know, we deserve his rage. I can understand his being mad at a lot of things that I do. And uh, if God punished me every time I do things in his rage, it would be horrible. Uh, in his mercy, sometimes it can even be, uh, life on earth can be uh, horrible because going through pain and suffering. But uh, not in your anger, correct me. More or less here I see the Lord is giving, uh, giving us a chance. We can go to the Lord and ask him not to do things, repent, to change our uh, ways and our attitudes in our mind, uh, and go to the Lord. Well, we can. Once we are gone from this earth, then we can't. Then God's anger against the unbelievers is going to be uh, n n without an end, I think. And uh, it begins then in chapter 2, it said, not begins, it continues, and it says, uh, Show mercy on me, O Lord, and we cry out for mercy, for I am asthenes, weak. And weakness of the human flesh in spirit or in uh, bodily being a weak person. Uh, heal me, 
O Lord, for my bones are disturbed. And exactly, I was reading this, preparing this for this day a couple of weeks ago, and I saw this and I'm going, boy, does that hit the spot with me with the, uh, uh, with the uh, bad femur in my left leg? My bones are disturbed, literally for me. It continues, and my soul is disturbed exceedingly. And this is what David is crying out. He's, this is not, he's not in a happy situation here. He's worried about wrath and uh, he's disturbed and so forth. But he says, you, O Lord, until when? When, how, when, it, when are you, uh, you're, are you, you couldn't possibly be uh, go against me forever. Uh, I think this is what he's talking about, you. you, you. When? Uh, when are things going to get better, maybe? Return, O Lord, rescue my soul. O Lord, Kyrie, rescue my soul. Now, here are the Kyrios, you know, is the the Lord, Kyrios, the Lord. And Kyrie is the vocative, where it's a direct um, speaking somebody's name, like George uh, or Harry, do this. And here it's, O oh Lord, rescue my soul. Seeking, psychology, seeky comes from that. Uh, deliver. Now, King James would have save. Save me because of your mercy. Uh, deliver me because of your mercy. Uh, he's buttering up God. He's telling God, you can rescue me. You can show mercy on me. Uh, you, you can do all these things. And uh, I think God wants us to come to him in that way, that we know that he can. He is the only one that can really show us the mercy uh, and rescuing us from all sorts of things. A lot of people may think government can rescue them or doctors uh, uh, and so forth, but I believe if it wasn't for God uh, putting everything together, holding everything together, it would just go, psh, uh, everything would, could just automatically just come apart. But God is holding everything together. He holds my life together and your life together for a purpose. For there is not... Uh, a remembering you in thanato, death. Uh, thanatology is the study of death. Uh, there's not a remembering you in death. Uh, well, that's interesting. And in Hades, who shall make acknowledgement to you? Hades. Now, here we have this location. Uh, it's called Adi. And uh, we can go and uh, find in our a application... Uh, ap apostolic Bible application, go down and do the study on number 86. Adu, Hades is uh, ha Avis. Uh, and you can see and you do a wonderful word study with this um, application. And I was talking to Terry about how it would be wonderful if somebody decided to use this for a master's thesis and write a book on the two places where a person will go once they have crossed over from death uh, into the next place. And the two places were basically ah, these, Jesus mentions ah, these. In the Hebrew, it's called Shal, uh, and, and it, was it was translated by the rabbis hundreds of years before Christ into ah, these, hey, these. And that would be the one place that people will go, and the other place would be, uh, mentions different things, Abraham's bosom, paradise, paradisio in the Greek, and the new, Jer uh, the new Jerusalem, a cube coming down out of heaven in the last, a second to last chapter of the book of Revelation. So we're either going to go one of the two places. So it's good to know what, they're all about, what they are, and it's easy to find out. All you have to do is have this uh, app, and you can go through a little bit. I went through it, but it's a, uh, uh, there's a, uh, let me see, how many it says, uh, 82 occurrences, so you can do a wonderful study on this. It goes down, uh, and uh, it talks about the first place it's mentioned is in Genesis 37, 35, where Jacob finds out that Joseph has apparently been mauled by a lion, and he's dead, although his brother sold him into slavery. And Jacob talks about going down into Hades, first 
mention of this place. It mentions, in uh, that's in uh, Genesis 37, 35. Then in Deuteronomy 32, uh, 22, and Isaiah 14, 9, it calls it the lower, going down, below. It's, uh, it's not up. Up is heaven, and down is Hades. Now, if it's inside of the earth, could very well be. We've not even come close to the earth is like a ball here, and we have like even not even touched it. It's the deepest thing and has only went down as the hair compared to the whole of the earth. So what is there inside? Uh, we don't really know. Conjecture, science, and so forth. But it is down below, Hades is. It mentions that. The Lord uh, in, uh, is the one who sends people into Hades. Now, from what I see, that Hades was the place of the dead in the Old Testament. And then later, it talks about Jesus going down into Hades and bringing those up. And I believe the ones that believe in him or somehow are the, in the future of the Messiah will be come out of Hades and join uh, God uh, in New Jerusalem, maybe. Uh, then uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb, where the Old Testament uh, holy ones and the New Testament holy ones will sit down at a table and talk about their experiences. How uh, I I'm in the New Testament. I never I wasn't under the law in the Old Testament. Person, well, I I had to go do everything, and I was never under the free freedom of grace. And they'll be talking, and yet this is the marriage supper of the Lamb. I I believe. And then it talks about Hades in different places here in 2 Samuel 22, 6, about the cords of Hades. Now, what are cords of Hades? Sounds like something that ties you down into this place. Uh, Job 7, 9, he says, in no way should, uh, should we ascend, I want to ascend from Hades. Should, but with Jesus, they did. Uh, and there's different levels of Hades. It mentions that in Psalms 86, 14. Proverbs 14, 12, and 16, 18. And the dangers of Hades in Psalms 1, 16, 4. I'm getting all this from this, this one study. Uh, it's a, there's a perch of Hades, Proverbs 9, 18. The rescue mission that I preached in for years, and now a couple of years, uh, had this beautiful picture. I wouldn't call it beautiful. It's a picture on the wall, a big mural. Somebody did. And what it was was like a volcano, uh, the, the volcano, uh, and, uh, all, and it was fires coming out. And all around the volcano were people perched, and some of them were jumping in, had little bitty people all painted around, and some of them uh, were looking over, and other ones were turning around and walking away, and you had people that were different types of sin uh, that were on the perch of Hades, and if we were on the perch of Hades, that's not a good place to be. Uh, we don't want to be on the perch of Hades. We want to be on the perch of Uranos, of heaven. Then it talks about uh, the gates in Matthew, Jesus, uh, the gates of Hades. And this is sort of, uh, in Greek mythology, they have uh, Hades where it's a, uh, when you die, you go to down to Hades, but you have to cross the river Styx. And then uh, there is a boatman, uh, uh, what you call it, a barge, a man who runs it, his name is Sharon, and you give him a gold coin and he takes you over into Hades. And Sharon... Um, uh, gets a gold coin, and that's why a lot of people in the uh, Greek, in Eastern Europe, and so forth, when somebody dies, they'll put a coin in a dead person's mouth. So when they go to Hades, then Sharon will have his gold coin to take him into across the river Styx. And now, it very well could have been that Homer, it was, I think it was Homer that put all this together with the um, Hades, could have re got it from the Bible. I don't think it necessarily has to be the other way around, where the Bible got it from, uh, uh, got it from the Greek mythology. Uh, I think the the Bible was probably older than the than the Greek mythology. And then in Revelations one eighteen, it talks about the keys. So it's got a door and lock and so forth. The keys to Hades. And then finally in Revelation twenty fourteen, we're told that Hades is thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death. Now, whether or not Hades has the fire, I doesn't say, but the lake of fire definitely has this fire. And Jesus talks about the fire that doesn't is not quenched. And so it's a terrible place to be. Uh, and uh, we don't want to be eternally in, 
I, I look at people that commit suicide, and I'm thinking, well, you know, they may be going to a worse place than they are right now. Uh, why, if you knew that you're going to a worse pace if you died, then you certainly wouldn't want to commit suicide and go there faster, would you? No, but we as believers, we are not going there. We're going to go to heaven, so we um, go through the duration that God has planned for each one of our lives. Now we'll go back uh, to our text here. I, I tired in my moaning. I shall bathe my bed according to each night with my tears. I shall rain as tears on my strewn bed. Uh, the supplication to God uh, of God is merciful, and whatever we can do to uh, bring God's mercy upon us in petitioning him for his mercy is uh, is fine, I believe. And um, we don't want to do to go to God in pride that I have done something that I deserve uh, to be in heaven because I, uh, whatever, uh, I was a uh, the head of a church, or I had thousands of people came and watched me deliver sermons and so forth. But in David shows, and, and he's crying, uh, my eye, ophthalmos, uh, ophthalmologist, comes from that, uh, is disturbed from rage. Now, exactly whose rage? Rage of other people? Rage of, of David or the rage of God? I believe other people here. I grow old in all my enemies, because see, now he's talking about his enemies, so uh, disturbed from the rage of the enemies, probably. Now we have a quotation uh, in 6.8. You can see it's in the bracket of the New Testament, and we'll go down and we'll find out that's Matthew 7.23, where uh, it talks about uh, Jesus um, t talking to people who are, are sinning. Uh, it says... Uh, remove from me all the ones working lawlessness. And uh, working lawlessness and we're going to Jesus and lawlessness is not a good place to be. Uh, or I could say, I don't know who you are. You're the ones living in lawlessness. So we want to be in the, with the right actions towards God that we would not be considered lawlessness. Remove. Uh, from me, all the ones working lawlessness. So the people that are around us, if they're not walking with the Lord, they could be very well causing a, us or people to walk away from God by going into lawlessness because of their uh, actions of trying to get us away. And Satan would try to get us away from God by going and joining these people. Uh, for the Lord heard the sound of my weeping and uh, the crying before God and the supplication is where we should be. The Lord listened to my supplication. Oh, wow. Supplication, part of prayer. Here we got the Lord favorably received my prosevkin, my prayer. To me, supplication is a long, sort of with prayer. It's differentiated more in the Bible. Here in the Greek, you can see there's, there's also thanksgiving. But a lot of times when you look at prayer and how it's used, this 4335, you see that many places you're asking God for something or for somebody, or you're thanking God for something you've given and a prayer, uh, talking to God, what I should do, how I should uh, behave, and so forth. May they be put to shame, and may they be disturbed. Who? All my enemies. Now, with Christ, uh, it sounds like it's, you know, we're, the enemies were to pray for them. Here, uh, it's uh, give them what they deserve. In the New Old Testament, that's pretty much the way it was. Uh, I think it was uh, Jeremiah that prayed for what he was doing and put the, uh, his enemies to shame and so forth. But in, with Christ, we pray for our enemies, and it's a little different now. May they be turned back, and with uh, hopefully that treating our enemies and praying for them, that would be the result. And put to shame exceedingly, even quickly. Uh, do it, O Lord. Psalm 7, 
the Lord rescues the innocent. We'll find out about his rescuing, uh, delivering, there's a saving and rescuing. They're, they're different. We'll find out about that in the next video seminar. Hope you'll join us in Psalm 7. Till then, God bless.